What you are about to see is not real news. It is satire based on real news. The characters you are about to see are not real life humans. They are frighteningly realistic puppets based on real life humans. The views expressed in the show are not necessarily those of StarSat, its sponsors, its advertisers, or the nice lady that makes the coffee. That we could just end, we could build right here. So welcome to the suburbs of Constantia. Such a lovely place, such a lovely place. Living it up in the suburbs of Constantia. Any time of year, you can find us here. Relax, said the ADT guy. We are programmed to receive. You can check out at any time you want, but you can never leave. Kamochelo. Sialum Kela. Sonzela. Wam Kele Kile. To another state of the puppet nation. Justice couldn't be with us this week as he is still suffering with the stress of Gwede Mantashe's masterclass last week. But our ever faithful Rian Krebachen has leapt into the breach. Such a pleasure. This week we celebrate Africa Day. Let, Let us, us all unite, unite and celebrate together. Steve Hofmeyer persuades people to sign a petition to offer safe haven for white South Africans. How do I sign up? And IS took control of the ancient site of Palmyra. Oaks, escape to sunny Syria, prices slashed. All this and more, but first this. 
Breaking news! There's been a new development in the FIFA Buy Yourself a World Cup Only $10 Million scandal, with a South African hero arrested for his role. His high-profile involvement in 2010's event provided him with the perfect cover story. Oh, Zakumi, our new Hansi. What a tragedy! Clive Darby Lewis was denied parole for not showing any remorse. Chris Harney's killer had hoped to be released on medical grounds. Hello, Deborah. <sighs> what are you doing here? I just thought I'd pop by to show my friend Clive what remorse looks like. It's working, isn't it, Deborah? You want to touch me now, don't you? Don't you? <laughs> Lindiwe Masabuko completed her master's in public administration this week. Masabuko is now officially a Harvard graduate. One day, Mercy, one day, I'm coming for your edges. And ISIS wrote a scathing article stating that Michelle Obama wouldn't be worth more than $40 as a sex slave. Conservative Americans rushed to Twitter to say she wasn't even worth that much. Coincidentally, Michelle released a fitness video this week demonstrating she could kick every single one of their asses into next week. Take that and that. Ugh. If I wasn't the Flotus, I would totally tell you how I feel about you right now. You... You... Ugh! Operation Fiela continues to attract criticism wherever it shows its head. This government campaign sees police and army cooperating to clamp down on illegal weapons, drugs, prostitutes and other illegal activities. Raids on immigrants resulting in the arrest of thousands caused protests that Fiela was abusing human rights. And now a crackdown in gang-ridden Mannenberg last week has sparked increased gang violence. Open up! We know you're in there! Open up! Fuck up, Dylan Mayers! We have a warrant for your arrest! <laughs> Fuck off! So you are telling me the gang leader is right inside here and you don't arrest him yet? No, man, he's scary that old. No wonder you cops need us to do all the heavy lifting. Get the fuck out of this house right fucking now, or I will have to come in there and show you my fucking gun up close. I thought I told you I was to fuck off. You know, I think I saw a teenager smoking pot on the corner. Yeah, yeah let's go arrest him. Then, then we can meet our quota. If we are lucky, he might also be foreign. Yeah, he did. He did look a bit foreign. Nice. Double whammy. Oh, but fuck. <laughs> Danny Ordan's appointment as mayor of Nelson Mandela Bay has taken a turn for the scandalous. ANC council members have threatened to sabotage the upcoming mayoral elections to force Yordan out. The rogue ANC councillors have said that stayaways and even collusion with the opposition party will be the order of the day. Uh, boss? I told you before, if that silly chain is going to make you depressed, take it off! But, but, uh, I like it. Can I... Can I ask you something, boss? Yes, Danny. What? What do you do when people are really mean? How would I know? I'm FIFA Pope. Well, it's just that you know what it's like to have everyone hate you. What? Who hates me? No one hates me. Only jealous people who want to overthrow me. So how do you deal with those people? Have you tried the money? Money? You know, money, briefcases, Cayman Island, whatever it takes to make my Danny happy again. What about the voters? What have they got to do with anything? Just let me fix it, Danny. It's okay. I'm FIFA Pope. Welcome to the Logic Factor with me, Justice Malala, where I ask you to think straight, like a setup-proof ruler. Last week, I asked you what you thought about the city of Cape Town making gang-stricken areas immune to load shedding. And honestly, guys, this is the most illogical you've been yet. No, really, guys. The majority of you said D. Guys, I'm going to explain this really slowly because you're obviously not getting it. 
if they could keep all the lights on, they would. They aren't load shedding for shits and giggles. It's a crisis, people, a crisis. Just like your illogical brains. Good grief, man. <sighs> this week, I want to know whether you think Clive Darby Lewis in jail for Chris Honey's murder should be granted medical parole. A, we have laws governing when medical parole is granted. They should be followed. B, no way, no how, no never. C, if Shabir Sheikh can have medical parole, Darby Lewis should get it too. Or D, cut the guy a break. He said he's sorry. So, there you have it. A, B, C, or D. You can vote on our website or Facebook and share your logic with us, and I'll be back next week to tell you how logical or illogical your answers were. <sighs> What's wrong, honey? I don't know. I think I know what the problem is. Are you wearing a tampon? Uh, no, but, um, Mum, I'm not on my period right now. So? Haven't you seen the ads? Wearing a tampon gives you energy. It gives you confidence. <laughs> Now quickly, tell me your phone number. It's very important. Oh, okay, <laughs> sure. When you wear a tampon, you always look good in white. Most of all, remember, wearing a tampon makes you irresistible to men. Oh, you look amazing. Oh, <laughs> it's just my tampon. <laughs> Thanks, Mom. Tampons, they're f***ing awesome. The EFF called this week for DSTEM to be dropped from the national anthem, calling it a direct conscious assault on African unity. They insist Nkosi Sikilele should be sung the way it was sung during the struggle. That's right, comrade. It is a relic of apartheid. What is he saying, Muhu? Near fuck. I the blow fun on I the deep death fun on you see, this is a permanent reminder of the horrors our people overcame. Mm, it certainly can be a bit nauseating. Afrikaner pride! Rian, have you signed the petition yet? Oh, dearie me, no. I'm thrilled to stay here in South Africa. And you, Debra? Not in a million years. What petition? Uh, well, there's a petition for the European Union to let all white South Africans go and live there. Take refuge from genocide. Rian, where do I sign? Uh, uh, you just had your name online. Ah, the freedom fighters are going to be so excited about this. Yo, this will be great for African unity. There you go, Steve. Thousands more signatures for you. You know, for a mampara sometimes, you aren't so stupid. No, and for a stupid piece of shit, you have your uses. I think you guys should hug it out. Racist scum! scum! President Jacob Zuma has truly got into the spirit of Africa Day. Speaking at celebrations in Pretoria, the president said that the African Union anthem should be taught in schools, sung in churches and at all gatherings to promote patriotism. We do that already with our national anthem, but maybe he didn't get that memo. There is no such thing as too much patriotism, Deborah. We should all be true patriots like me. <laughs> <laughs> and you really believe that a song is going to fix all that, Mr. President? Oh, yes. And that dance that goes with it, of course. So dancing will solve the African Union's problems. Right. You never know until you try it. <laughs> I will now teach it to you and you can teach it to others. Because I am not an idols contestant, I have brought professional help. <laughs> Even though I didn't write this song, I think it's fantastic. Let's wait for the music, Mr. President. Oops. <laughs> Sorry. My patriotic spirit took me. All true patriots dance like this. Let us all unite and celebrate together. The victories won for our liberation. Let us dedicate ourselves to rise together. To defend our liberty and unity. All together now. Let, Let us all unite and celebrate together. The victories won for our liberation. 
Let us dedicate ourselves to rise together To defend our liberty and unity Questionable reports of the death of Trevor Noah's cousin appeared in the Sunday Times last week. The paper claimed the report had been confirmed by his grandmother. The comedian took to Twitter to deny reports that the woman who had died was related to him. In an attempt to uncover the truth, we have decided to do some real journalism and ask actual questions. Mr. Noah, a number of reports have surfaced and we would like to verify these reports with you. Oh, that's great. Fine, thanks. Go ahead. Did your cousin die last weekend? No, all of my cousins are alive and accounted for. We checked all of them. What about reports that you have had the stars and stripes tattooed onto the small of your back? An American flag tram stamp? No, that, that did not happen. That will never happen. It says that your grandmother has moved to a trailer park in Florida. Is this true? No, she's still in Soweto. What about your secret marriage to a Spice Girl? No, they are really old, Deborah, really old. What about rumours that you will be replacing Daniel Craig in the next Bond movie? What? No, but... Wait, wait. Can I can I do that? Or that you will be joining the cast of Magic Mike 2. No, I don't strip. Or that you're currently recording a rap album with Tommy Lee and Kanye West. No, none of these things have happened. And of course, you're not really hosting The Daily Show. Such ludicrous rumours. Oh, no, that one's true. <laughs> oh, nice try. You almost had me going there. Trevor Noah, <laughs> hosting The Daily Show. No, 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 really, guys, I am hosting The Daily Show, for realsies. Oh, oh, oh he's good. Isn't he good, Deborah? <laughs> the Daily Show. <laughs> Welcome to Hard Shout, where anything I say goes and anything anyone else says probably gets shouted down. It's a chance for us to really cut to the chase, cut through the crap and cut the cord of the usual molly coddling interviews you see on TV. Joining us today is US Governor and a man who would love to be President of the United States. Chris Christie. Awfully good of you, Deborah. It's not good of me. It's a contractual obligation. Mr. Christie, why are so many Republicans nasty, nasty little people? I can't say I ever met a nasty Republican, Deborah, but I met a bunch of nasty journalists. Don't twist this around. No nasty Republicans? How about Donald Trump? A successful businessman and a good friend. Sarah Palin? You got to understand women's brains. They just aren't cut out for politics. It gets to their heads. That's just science. How about yourself? Don't you think it's a little nasty to spend $82,000 of taxpayers' money on snacks at ball games? This kind of physique needs to be maintained, Deborah. It takes energy to govern. Presumably, it takes more energy to be president. So if you ever achieve that dream, how big will your snack bills be then? I, I couldn't possibly say. You're such a smug, selfish human being. I put the important needs first, Deborah. If I'm in top condition, my state will be in top condition. There's nothing about you that is in top condition. You are a slob. You're a selfish idiot. You're a coward and you don't have a single original thought in that nasty head of yours, which is why the gun lobbyists and conservative right wing will simply eat you up the way you eat up ball game snacks. If you ever get into power, America is doomed. I think you'll find you don't get to vote on whether I am president or not, Deborah. So I don't really care what you think. So there you have it, Chris Christie. He doesn't really care what you think. Are you tired of fine lies? Yes. Had enough of dark blemishes? Logical all day, all night moisturizer. It's fast acting and lets you be you. Oh, that's nice. Made from the fibers of pure logic and integrity. Logical all day, all night moisturizer helps to combat neoliberals and radical freedom fighters with its ANC and NPA resistant formula. It's the logical choice. Logical for thick skin. Did you see that artwork with the piece of meat swiping right on Tinder? I was with you up until artwork and then things got a little hazy. Oh, come on, you know Tinder. No. You know online dating? I've heard of it. Well, it... Yeah, you know what? Actually, no, never mind. 
I'm not e- I, I can't even begin. Rather talk about the olden days. You're good at that. Yes, it's time for some old news with me, Rian Kreivagen. When are you taking us today, Rian? Well, Deborah, it's been nearly 40 years since the Electricity Supply Commission decided to go nuclear. You might know them better as ESCOM. Let me take you back. Good evening, Guyanaand. The South African Electricity Supply Commission, ESCOM, announced today that it has ordered two nuclear power reactors from the French company Framatome. A recent nuclear deal with General Electric fell apart due to international pressures on that company. Some still believe that South Africa might be wanting nuclear power for more sinister reasons than electricity. Nonsense, Rian Onsen. We are simply trying to make provision for the continued growth of the South African power grid. There have been serious allegations that South Africa might be looking to arm itself against the red tide of communism. Oh, my only concern is electricity. I know nothing about communista. Goed so. Then let me ask you, is nuclear power really safe? Of course it is. There are so many huge plants running safely around the world. Rheinsberg, Three Mile Island, Fukushima, Chernobyl. Good. Perfectly safe then. And this will absolutely ensure that South Africa always has more than enough electricity to go around. Unless, of course, black people start wanting some too. <laughs> yes. Ha ha. The Pope has been making life difficult for conservative Republicans with his increased activism around climate change. Many have taken to proclaiming themselves Republicans first, Catholics second. It is also believed that any Republicans perceived to be too close to the Pope, like Jeb Bush, may lose their Republican credibility. So lovely of a Jew to invite me over, Miss Berlin. I think I'd better reveal the truth. You see, this isn't tea. Is coffee? Heck no! It's an intervention, so-called Pope. Gotcha! You're such a darn people-pleasing, wishy-washy excuse for a Catholic. You say the first no-good thought that comes into your thick head. I say what I believe as a man of God, my daughter. Well, maybe you're not listening close enough to God, Daddy-o. Have you been stuffing communion bread in your stinking ears? You're completely screwing up this Pope thing. You even said evolution isn't against Christianity. It isn't. You see, this is why you need me. Because you're obviously insane. You're you're nice to dirty, diseased, homosexual, poor people. You yada, yada, yada on about libtard ideas like climate change. You even recognize Palestine for Christ's sake. Francis, I'm praying for you to be healed. I rebuke you in the name of Bristol Palin. Perhaps it's only Republicans that cannot evolve. (laughs) In Russia, President Vladimir Putin has signed a law allowing prosecutors to shut down undesirable foreign organizations. Amnesty International and Human Rights Watch have condemned the law, stating that it goes against civil liberties. They are being ridiculous. I do only what is best for Mother Russia. What qualifies as undesirable? Everything that is bad for Mother Russia, like this. Since Ireland has decided that they are with the gays, they are undesirable. Surely you can't outlaw a whole country? Maybe not. But I can outlaw their organizations. Guinness is now undesirable. Oh, I see where this is going. How is this helping Russia, though? Last time I was at McDonald's, I got soggy fries. McDonald's is undesirable. Because of soggy fries. Russia does not need soggy fries. And this. Last time I was in KFC, the service was horrible. KFC is undesirable. At this rate, you'll have no fast food. (laughs) But we will have good service. Manchester United hasn't won a match in weeks. Man United is undesirable. Oh dear. Yes, you. This new movie, the new Terminator, they still have that nice Arnold in the movie. Yes, he's still in it. Okay, it can stay. 
The IS have captured Palmyra in Syria, a UNESCO archaeological site, and killed hundreds of women and children. The West feared the site would be destroyed, but so far it remains intact. Perhaps they have other plans for it. How's it, everyone? It's me, Jahadi Henny, here to welcome you to Palmyra, the world's best resort. I've been here for a little while now, ever since I saw an amazing package deal and I'm having a great time. You Oaks should come see it for yourselves. Best holiday destination ever! There's plenty of room and it's very cheap, eh? It's lovely and virtually empty of all infidels since they all drop down dead. There's a range of holiday activities for the whole family to enjoy. For example, target practice. Swimming, even bird watching. Oh, and dodgeball. Infidels just die spontaneously here. It's really that holy. So don't believe the lies in the media, but do believe me and these nice pictures. Palmyra is awesome, folks. If you are not an infidel, you must definitely come check it out. I'm just off to cooking class. <laughs> Join the jihad and get a tan. Yeah, I'm fed. I, I, you know, man, I'm, I'm busy with this lesson right now. I just want to be able to read Socialist Party's founding documents in Swedish. Because, in fact, you know, democracy and socialism have nothing in common except one word. Equality, as the Trickerville said. Yeah. Sharp. Sharp word. Eh. Uh, fat. Eh, uh, slut. Slut! Get killing, get killing, get killing! I believe it is Hunter S. Thompson who said that journalism is overrun by dullards, bums, and hacks. That's a dullard with the two L's, right? Okay, great. Uh, thanks, Mr. Mingi Mingi team. What time are you shit? Thank you. Thanks, that's great. Okay. Um, okay, now look, look angry. Ah! Angrier. <laughs> great. Ah! Great. Mm! Do, do you, do you think Julius will read this? Yeah, for sure, eh? For sure. So there you have it, folks. The highs, the lows, the ins, the outs. The shake it all abouts of this week's news. This has been the 82nd state of the puppet nation. Goodbye. Deborah, that tender piece of meat thing you were talking about earlier. No, not tender, Rian. Tinder. Well, is it a piece of art symbolizing how online dating objectifies us all and turns us into pieces of meat while simultaneously highlighting our lack of real knowledge of who or what it is on the other side of the screen? I mean, is that it? You're good. Ah, good. Now I can relax. What's wrong? Well, now I'm thinking about how we're all just pieces of meat stuck in a machine. Right-ho. Well, gosh, Hanada. You do that then. I'm off. <laughs>